that which we speak with, that which uh, comes out of our mouths. And we last week we talked about uh, the Lord um, cleansing our mouths, the Lord consecrating our mouths, and uh, the Lord, as we consume his word, uh, out of our mouths come his word. And we looked at the blood of the Lord, did we? Holy Spirit touching our lips, and uh, the word of the Lord that uh, feeds us. And uh, so important uh, to have all those going on and uh, getting into God's word. And uh, knowing God's word, isn't it? Isn't it strange how we can um, be in the house of the Lord for such a long time and uh, know little of God's word so often? A new pastor had just uh, uh, gone into a church, so he thought he'd have a little look around now, so he went down into the Sunday school, and the Sunday school teacher said, Pastor, we are are learning about uh, Joshua. Oh, he said, oh, lovely, wonderful. He uh, he said, can I, well, let me just have a little look, let's let's ask the children some questions. He said, now children, he said, "Um, let's see if you've been listening. Who tore the walls down of Jericho? Who tore down the walls of Jericho? one answered a little Johnny had his head bowed and he said he said sir it definitely wasn't me this time definitely wasn't. and so the pastor thought he'd, he'd press it a bit further come on he said come on who tore down the walls of Jericho and the teacher said look pastor I know little Johnny he's a bit of an outer but I can guarantee I, I believe him this time he didn't he, he wasn't the one who pulled the walls down he thought and the pastor thought oh yeah yeah what's happening here Something's gone wrong. So he thought, he goes to the Sunday school director in charge of it all. He said, look, I'm, what, I've just asked this question. I'm really concerned. What's happening? And the director said, well, well sir, um, we've had some problems with Johnny before. Let me talk to him and see what we can do about it. He thought, oh, yeah, yeah, what's happening? So next, uh, next diaconate meeting, he gets somebody, and he said, I'm really bothered about this. He said, I went to the teacher, I went to the Sunday school director, and these are the answers I had. And he said, what's happening here? And uh, one of the old deacons, white-haired gentleman, stroked his chin and said, well, pastor, I, I move that we take the money from the general fund and pay for the walls and leave it at that. Yeah. Funny, but not so funny. And uh, true, and maybe truer than we think, sadly. But our lips, our lips. And the Bible tells us, and the the Proverbs is full, isn't it? Full of uh, our words and what we say and how we say and how that affects. Isn't it amazing um, that the things that have been done to you, those words, those words, uh, you can remember them. You can remember those days they were said to you, especially those cutting words that we just read, uh, the words of the Lord. Uh, and, and the Bible talks about our words, our lips, pre-coming to Jesus, and then the difference that should be after we come to Jesus uh, and get saved. The Bible tells us, Romans 3, which is a, a verse out of uh, Psalm 140, there is no one righteous, there is none. There is none who seeks God. Under their tongues, their tongues keep deceiving, and poison of asps are under their lips. Their lips. That's an interesting thing, isn't it? Uh, uh, Poison of asps. What are those words under our lips? And we've got to be careful as Christians. Yeah, our own nature doesn't rise up, and those those poisons of asps. And I was just looking at... um, uh, I did have a thing here somewhere, of, of um, the power of that poison, what it does. Um, different poisons, of course, do different things. But uh, it, it debilitates. It, some of those poisons from the snake destroy the nervous system. So the nervous system doesn't work properly. Some destroy the bloodstream, where the, it, it actually causes the blood, the blood cells to explode. Fancy that. And some uh, uh, act on the muscles where it just shuts the body down. And we can see that, can't we? Of those people who have been spoken to. Those words that have been said over people. I've shut them down. I've um, stopped them being what they should be. Um, and uh, we, can, we can go through uh, example of, of an example of, of people. And we've talked about people before. Uh, those those um, athletes and those uh, those singers who who've gone into anorexia because someone is just just a throwaway comment sometimes. Um, obviously, the 
there's some underlying issues there, you know, um, uh, like you're fat. Simple as that. Uh, and when they weren't, and uh, that, that, those words just impinged on them and just nagged away at their thinking and stopped them. Stop them actually being what? And, and words are powerful. And that's where the Bible says, now be careful. Our lips. Then the Bible calls uh, our lips foolish. Foolishness is on our lips. Uh, flattery is on our lips. Oh, smooth talk. God, I, and the Bible is very clear. Um, uh, falsehood is on our lips. Our lips can be full of piercing and sword and pride, the Bible says. Our words can be, it's another F for you, fatuous. It's a nice one, isn't it? It means empty. Many words, but no substance. And we have that uh, from scientists, and we have that from our world, didn't we? Many words, many many intellectual people. And you can sit there and you think, well, I actually don't know what they're saying now. And I've, I've listened to some uh, some ministers like that. Not this archbishop, was it? The, uh, the Welsh one, Rowan Williams. I used to listen to him speak, and then... After I'm thinking, I actually don't know what he's actually said there. And, and sometimes it's probably a good thing. Uh, <laughs> but you, you can, much, much intellect, but absolutely empty, empty. Now, this, listen to this now. The Bible is very clear about what God thinks about lips pre-redemption. This is what he said. The Lord hates lying lips. Um, he says, uh, in fact, he, he goes further in Proverbs 12. Uh, we just read it. The lying lips are an abomination to him. Because lying lips, the Bible says, a lying tongue hates those who they lie to. That's what the proverb says, isn't it? Lying lips. And that's where the psalmist says, now keep me, keep my words, keep my tongue, hold me, Lord, my tongue from lying lips. Flattery, foolishness. Uh, Proverbs 18 Proverbs 18 and 6 and 7, some great verses. Proverbs, I love Proverbs. I don't know about you, but I, I, I sometimes laugh when I'm reading God's Word. And Proverbs is full of those verses where I chuckle to myself. So much wisdom in one verse, isn't it? So much uh, uh, stuff you can get from one verse. And, and when I, you, you read it, and, you, you, and of course some of them, are, you, you think like a, a nagging wife is like a dripping tap. Um, and uh, those kind of, I, I, that's my sense of humor, so, sorry. But, um, and, and other verses like that. And we can see the, 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 uh, the uh, wisdom of God. Listen to this, uh, 18, A fool's lips bring him strife, and his mouth invites a beating. A fool's mouth, mouth is, is undoing, and his lips are a snare to his soul. You see, what happens is the Bible gives us that idea that our lips, our words, consume us, actually overrun us. Isn't that true? Uh, what do they say? Well, I read it. Um, I careful. I keep my words soft and sweet. I never know uh, from day to day which ones I'll have to eat. I like that one. <laughs> Very true. Uh, so our lips pre-salvation, full of poison, full of foolishness. And that foolishness can, can, can consume us. And isn't it amazing? You listen to people talk and you think, how silly, how stupid. Even intelligent people can be so foolish in their words. But the Bible is very clear. When there's none righteous, none, our mouths are just a reflection of our beings, our hearts. The Bible tells us that. So what comes out there, so just listen to your words sometimes. Listen to your words. What's coming out of your mouth? Ask someone what they think. Ooh. That, hey, that's good, isn't it? I, I can say, ask your wife or your husband. Woo-hoo, they'll tell you. Um, uh, what, what's coming out of my mouth? Thanks be to God. God comes. God comes and graciously touches our hearts. Graciously touches our hearts. The Bible says, those words, those words uh, uh, that we once had, Colossians 3, are our old life. See, so don't come with slander and malice and gossip and uh, all those things. In fact, Titus says, do not slander anybody. Oh, even those who, who deserve it. Even those who deserve it. Bless the Lord. What do we see on Thursday? Martha, when she had a problem with Mary, 
Daisy so-and-so Mary. What did she do? She went to the Lord. Lord, this woman, sort her out for me. That's the way to do it, isn't it? And as soon as the, the Lord begins to speak to her, he changes her perspective of how to see that person. Bless the Lord. Oh, Father, help us to get rid of those things in our lips that cause so much problems. The Bible says this, Psalm 45. Psalm 45, a beautiful psalm. Psalm 45. My heart overflows um, with a noble theme, with a godly theme. As I recite my verses for the king, my tongue will be the pen of a ready writer. You, the most excellent of men, your lips, listen to this, your lips have been anointed with grace. That's what God does. Your lips, last week we talked about the the, the cleansing of the Lord, the consecration when the Lord touched the lips, and then the, the word of the Lord that consumes us, so we're speaking his word. And then the, this beautiful verse, the Lord gushes forth. The word anoint you means to gush forth, to actually pour out his grace. Now, some of us are, are, are less gracious than others, and we need a real outpouring, some of us, don't we? Because our words could be not very gracious. And the Bible says he pours out the grace Gracious words on our hearts and our lips. So we get to a place where the Bible says of Job, in all these things, Job, verse, Job 2 verse 10, in all these things, um, remember, what a day he had, didn't he? Boy, he was left with four servants and his wife. Lost his cattle, lost his camels, lost his sheep, lost his cattle, lost his children, everything else. And uh, all, 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 he had one, one servant came back every time uh, from those things. So he left with four servants and his wife. And his wife, after when he was struck with bodily illness, what happened? Curse God and die. So she was no help either then. And what did he say? Shush now. Shush now. He said, foolish woman. Be quiet. See, should we not accept good from the Lord and adversity. The Bible says in all these things, Job did not sin with his lips. His lips. The Bible tells, we talked about maturity a few months ago, and James says, those who can keep his mouth in check is perfect man. Now again, that word perfect means mature man. When we are becoming more and more mature in the Lord, our lips, our words we can, we can control. We can bite our tongue. We can say the right things at the right time and not say the wrong things at the right time or the wrong time, isn't it? Silence sometimes is the best option or a gentle answer. Proverbs 15 verse 1, a gentle answer turns away anger. Isn't that true? Because how many people does it make? Take to get an argument going? Two. I do argue with myself sometimes and I generally win. Or lose, depends, depends what we're arguing about. But be very careful also. Now, when we talk about our lips, Jesus was very careful because obviously it, it, it's an expression of our heart, but he said, Be very careful because the, the heart is desperately wicked and deceitful. And this is what he said about the Pharisees. Remember the Pharisees? Outwardly religious, people would look up to them, they were wonderful people. Yet he said this. Uh, Matthew 15, quoting from Isaiah prophecy in 29. They honor me with their lips. They value me with their lips. But their hearts are far away. Their hearts are far away. Their worship is in vain. It's empty. It's futile. It's religious. Their teachings are man-made rules. Their traditions overrode God's commands. And we've got to be careful there. Eh? That our traditions don't override the commands of God, God's word. Because we, we, we've done things this way all the time, of course. It doesn't mean we're going to always going to do it that way. If God says, no, 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 that's not my command. That's what you like. And there's nothing wrong with some things we like either. But we don't, we don't actually war over tradition. We war over God's word, don't we? We fight for his word. And he said, now be careful. Proverbs says this, fervent lips... Ooh, flaming lips with a wicked heart is like an earthen vessel coated with a silver glaze. Ha <laughs> ha, it looks good. Oh, but it's just a glaze. 
because the heart deep down is not there. It's not there. So be careful. Beware, Jesus said, beware of your words. They're not just words. It's life and lips, isn't it? Life and lips. What does he say in 1 Peter 3? Now, change, it's all about your lifestyle change, life and lifestyle change, because chapter 2, he says, what are we? We're a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God. So this is how you're to live. Then he says this, your lifestyle change. There's, listen, who, who wants to, who loves life and wants to see good days? Well, here we go. Love life, see good days. How? Refrain your tongue from evil and let your lips have no guile, no deceit. Isn't that amazing the power of our words? Power of our words to bring good life and long life. Bless the Lord. Now again, of course, we, we are subject, I was talking to someone this week, and we are subject to take all of the teaching that's true in God's word and overemphasize it, aren't we? So then, of course, we take all of that and we think, well, I'm going I'm to speak uh, prosperity and life. Ho oh, and, ho! And, and we, we over, over, no, no, no. There is power in our words. Remember that. Our power. Be very careful. Don't take God's word and uh, uh, imbalance it. God's word, our words, life, life, life. And the Bible says then, he opens my mouth. He opens my mouth. He says, be careful, watch my mouth. Uh, David says, he set a guard over, oh Lord, set a guard, set a watch over my mouth. Keep a watch, keep a, maintain a guarding over the door of my lips. See, there's a combination here of God asking God to help us and also uh, helping yourself, isn't it? Um, my nan used to say, God helps those who help themselves. And again, not totally true, but there's a grain of truth in there because there's got to be cooperation between you, you and God, isn't it? Now, God gives us the ability, but we've got to allow him to have his way. So he, he's asking God, set a watch over my, uh, over my mouth, Lord, keep a watch over my, the door of my lips, but then he says in, in Psalm 34, I keep a watch. I keep a watch over my tongue. I keep it from evil. I keep my lips from speaking deceit. The one who guards his mouth preserves his life. The one who, uh, read that. The one who opens wide his lips comes to ruin. What do they say? Even a fool is seem, seem wise when he doesn't say anything. I like that. Again, a fool can seem wise. He said, where there's many words, sin is not far away. Then Psalm 39, he says, I will guard my mouth, my ways. I will put a bridle on my tongue. It's interesting that James uses three pictures, three symbols, three metaphors for the tongue, doesn't he? And he takes the big things that he can think of, and he shows how small the things are that maneuver it. So he says, look at a ship. Look at a ship. How that ship moves from one direction to another. How does it move? By a, a rudder. And the rudder is so much smaller than that ship itself. But that ship will go in the direction that the rudder is pointing. Just like your, your tongue. Your tongue's the smallest, one of the smallest things in your body. It never gets tired, does it? Your lips never get tired. Your jaw sometimes gets tired, but your lips and your tongue never does. I talk, then he says, what about a fire? What about a devastating fire? How is that started? By a little spark. By a little spark. How that big horse that could be a shire, that can, that, can, that can pull tons of weight, big horses, strong horses, how do you control those? By a little bit. You stick it in his chops, and you grab all of it, and you can move that, that horse wherever you want to. Just a little thing. And, and he's giving us a picture. Now be careful. Watch over your lips. Because such a small thing can determine and direct your life. And can cause major trouble. Let me just say, we all know when we put our foot in it. Oh dear. We've got, uh, what's caused most trouble in our lives? What we said. when we shouldn't have said it, isn't it? <laughs> or saying the wrong thing. That's why put a guard over my mouth. Lord, keep a guard over my mouth. Uh, give me help, but let me do my bit as well. Let me 
uh, hold on fast and direct my heart, direct my tongue. Psalm 51, which we may browse into tonight, uh, is that great psalm of David where he's confessing his sin. He's, he's, he's saying, look, I've sinned against you, Lord. I'm, I'm broken. I need your cleansing. I need your touch. Um, I need, need all that you have you can give me. And uh, please don't go from me. Please don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Uh, cast me not away from your presence. And we know the word. And then he comes and, and uh, asks for forgiveness. And then he says, Lord, because you've done this, now I want to teach people. I want to show people. I want to be a servant. I want to be a spokesman. I want to bring sacrifices that are acceptable to you. And he says, Lord, open my lips. Remember, the, the opening of his lips was a consequence of God's forgiveness and God's redemption and God's cleansing of his life. God touches and opens our lips. We talked a little bit about Daniel and Ezekiel last week where their lips were closed. He said to Ezekiel, Ezekiel, I'm going to shut your mouth and, and you're not going to say anything until I say so. Your tongue is going to stick to the roof of your mouth and you're not going to be able to speak. And then the Bible says, okay, Ezekiel, now is the time. The Bible says he comes down and he touches his lips to speak the word of the Lord. Daniel Daniel 10, he's so overwhelmed by the, the revelation of God. He's, he's, he's struck dumb. He's struck silent. And sometimes there's no words, is there? Uh, yesterday, or was it Friday? Um, they had a, a minute silence at 11.41 because it was, um, they said, probably at that time, the 10 millionth baby uh, of, uh, w was aborted. 10 million. 10 million children uh, from 1967 to now. Have been, have been See, that, that alone could, should strike, uh, strike us with just a, a weight of, of, of horror that we pray for the mercy of God on our land. But you know what? We are ripe for judgment and, and God would be well in his rights when we see now what they are they are thrusting on our children. You can't believe it. Even the children's programs are now permeated with what the Bible says is filth. The, the, and the Bible says God. when God hates something, it doesn't matter what we think, he hates it. He hates it. And he hates it for a good reason because it's, it's, it's bad for us <laughs> and it's bad for society. And he understands, and we see with our, our view, and so, so we see, but that's, that's the weight. And he was struck down by the revelation, and God had to touch his mouth. And this is, the psalmist says, open my mouth that I may praise you, Lord. Psalm 63, Psalm 63, he says, O oh Lord, earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you, my body longs for you, as in the dry and weary land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your God. Because your chesed is better than life, my lips will praise you. My lips will praise you. See, that, what grieves God heart, God's heart is our lips when they are pre, uh, they, they're talking like we're not saved, they're not consecrated, they're not cleansed. What pleases God's heart is someone who, 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 who's speaking his words, speaking his praise. Hebrews 13 verse 15 says, The sacrifice of praise, this pleases God. What's the sacrifice of praise? The fruit of my lips. My lips praising you, O Lord. Psalm 63 again goes on and says, uh, My soul will be satisfied as with the riches of foods. My, my singing lips, my rejoicing lips, my mouth will praise you, O Lord. And uh, there's, a, there's, there's the connotation there. There's a bit of loudness. Oh dear, we don't like loudness, do we? I tell you what, when we see God's salvation when we see his goodness and his mercy, I tell you what, if you can't shout then, don't, don't you dare shout at anything else. Don't you dare shout after a football or after something you, you like or this and that. Don't you dare shout then if you can't shout for what God has done for us. His goodness and his mercy, his chesed, that deserves a shout. He said, these lips are going to praise you, Lord. These lips are going to shout praise to you. My lips will pour forth praise Hallelujah. Again, the same word, gush. It will gush forth praise. Psalm 71, we looked at the other day, the old man's psalm. The one thing he did continually was what? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord, I will continually praise you because of what you have done. 
My lips will shout, he said, for joy. Hallelujah. My praise, my soul, when I understand that you have redeemed me. Bless the Lord. It also says, Lord, my words, my lips will not just praise you. They will, they will practice and, and pronounce, preach your, all peace, your precepts. Bless your words. Lord, Psalm 49 says, Lord, I proclaim your righteousness uh, within the great congregation. I will not refuse and, and uh, restrict my lips from talking for you and talking your righteousness. Psalm 119, what a psalm. With my lips, I have told of all of your ordinances. Bless the Lord. And those lips to be touched by God afresh. Moses um, came, didn't he? And the Lord said, look, Moses, it's time for you to come. Eight years of age now. It's time for you. You're ready to minister for me. And his first excuse was, um, Lord, I'm not eloquent. Um, I've got, I've got a, a slow, slow of speech, which is not pretty, particularly true. Um, if you read, read uh, Stephen's uh, re recalling of the situation. Um, but then uh, he, he's gone, and, and uh, the Lord's got a bit of angry with him. And the Lord said, right, come on, Moses, I don't care about you. You're off. Go. So he goes to Pharaoh, and he said, Pharaoh, let my people go. And Pharaoh, of course, he says, Ooh, I do. who's this God? And I'm heard of him. He said, get on with you, lazy. Just play him for time. Get on with it. And he calls in the people. He said, right, tell you what, you're going to make as many bricks without straw. You're going to collect your straw yourself. And, of course, there's, the, the, there's, there's even more animosity with Pharaoh and Israel. And then the people of Israel said, look, you come here encouraging us and, and uh, saying we're going to be free. And now we, we're worse off. And the Bible says they would not listen to him because of their despondency, their discouragement within their heart. That's interesting, isn't it? And then this is what he says. Moses is before the Lord and says, Lord, um, they're not going to listen to me because I come with uncircumcised lips. That's, the real, that's the, the real translation there. And that really says, Lord, my words are having no effect because they are uncircumcised. Now, uns no, circumcision course, is an outward sign of what God is doing, or what God has done, of God's calling, of God's covenant, of God's commission and consecration, God's uh, seal. See, so when they, were, when, when they were circumcised, it was an outward sign of what God was doing. So they knew who they were. They recognized who they were. Every time they washed, every time they went to the lavatory, they knew who they were. There was a covenant sign. And uh, he says, Lord, I don't, I, I come with uncircumcised. They are not listening to me. Pharaoh's not listening to me. No one's listening to me. God really doesn't um, answer that. He just gives, uh, in verse 12, he gives him another charge. You just go. You go and speak my words. He said, I give you my charge. I give you my words. And I give you, also, I give you Aaron as well. To speak for you as well. So just get on with it. Ah, bless the Lord. See, sometimes we, we make excuses, don't we? Oh, Lord, um, no effect. No, no, nothing's happening. They're not listening. Things are getting worse. And the Lord said, look, I've already told you to go and speak. I've already touched your lips. I've already given you the words. I've already given you the charge and the calling. Go and do it. Go and do it. Bless the Lord this morning. Let's come around the breaking of bread this morning and one good thing about breaking bread, we, we do examine our hearts, and uh, we will examine our hearts this morning for our words, our lips, and we have to confess, Lord, our words, our lips protect us, Lord, they've been loose, they have not spoken the word of the Lord as they should have, uh, they've spoken things we shouldn't have spoken, very clearly, let's confess that this morning, and then ask the Lord to, again, touch these lips of ours. Ooh, the call, the touch of God, the, the word of God in our hearts. Bless the Lord.